It's not the monitor. It's nice and buttery. I'm gonna give it a little bit of time to set before I move it. A lot of times you wanna move it too soon and it's too wet, guess what? It's not consistent and not even. You wanna be able to have control of the powder. Especially with polish that has nice pigment. Shape the nail, it's nice and crispy. So I don't have to shape too much later. This 10 brush is actually perfect for this, her nails, because she has a smaller nail base, smaller nail bed. I don't have to pick up too much powder and have too much excess. Gives me a little bit more control too. Monomer is back in stock. I you guys have been waiting. Just gonna do a two bead process a lot. You can do as many beads as you want. I just generally like doing two beads better. Just gets the process done faster for me. That should be good enough. Put some little powder on the side here because it's a clear tip. Let's see some in here. I wanna make sure this acrylic is smooth as possible. Less work for me later. This part you have to cap. Once it's done, it's done. Also, new little cute drill bit case here. I travel a lot, so my bit's always all over the place and they got a little cute new merchandise from the store. A lot of you guys that want one. Actually keeps it like nice and clean with the top. My brush will be here tomorrow. I'm ordering the monomer. Yes, the monomer just came back in stock. Yeah, you've been waiting. Of course, yes, everybody's been waiting. Even I was a little waiting. Now this is a size 10, but it's crimped, so it's actually a little bit larger than most. But it's a 10 crimped. I will, I just, um, I will be having a 32 ounces soon. It's just that I'm, I'm, find, I'm trying to find the perfect bottle, guys, um, to be able to uh, ship the monomer. Um, I want like a nice polyurethane bottle. I don't, I don't really go cheap when it comes to my, um, my, uh, my, my products being stored, you know, I want to make sure that the, the bottle is good quality and, you know, not like a juice box. That's the polyurethane to be able to hold the chemical, to be able to, you know, be heat resistant and all that stuff. So finding the, the container is actually harder than you think because the distributors, they'll fight you on it. They'll try to, oh, you know, just use this. I'm like, no, I don't like that. I want this tech bottle. And it takes a while for them to agree and price and stuff like that, so. It should be soon though. They're, they sent me some samples. I like some of them. Sample bottles. This powder is extremely buttery. By wave gel. I like it. I definitely don't need a big brush here. Sets like this, one color, you should be able to finish in about 40 minutes max. Um, a lot of the work is done in your application. As long as your application is very smooth, you ain't gotta do a lot of work, you know? Later on, you just got a file shape, quick, quick file, quick shape, top coat, and you're good to go. So focus a lot of your time on your application. Make sure you got the control down. Make sure you got the consistency, you know? Don't flood the cuticles, so you don't have to do too much cuticle work later. And generally like that, just a nice, quick, simple set. In and out. Probably book like five or six of these a day and make good money. You don't have to do designs, all that stuff to make money. That's where the money's at. Uh, this is Wave Gel Flamingo W49. It's actually a really nice coral pink. Wave Gel Flamingo. This one's a little buttery, more buttery than most. It takes about three seconds for the monomer to start kind of working. You see that? See, I'm not gonna touch that. I'm just gonna let it give it about like seven seconds just to sit. 
nothing's more satisfying than living a great profile. Yeah, trust me, I know. I, I love that feeling also because I know for a fact that that's gonna shave off 15, 20 minutes of my time later on with all the other excess stuff. But it just takes time. A lot, a lot of you guys are like really in a rush and you try to, you let the acrylic kind of control your speed. If it's too runny, let it sit. You know, if it's too runny, let it sit. If it's, you know, too dry, work a little quicker, but most likely if you're using EMA monomer, it's gonna be more runny than uh, dry. But just let it sit. You don't have to rush. Five, seven seconds while sitting, just to get to the perfect consistency. It's not gonna hurt your timing. It's when you rush that you have to go back through and do this, do that. That's when it's gonna hurt your timing. Let the powder work on your own time. Look at that. Just so easy, right? Easy, right? You can do this at home? <laughs> we try to get as perfect as possible, but nothing's really perfect when it comes to nails, to be honest with you. It's hard. People strive for perfection. Let's see. I love this color. Yeah, this color is pretty. Yeah, I really like this color. Yeah. Let's see a little bit for them. And my monomer is pretty much compatible with any powder you have. Um, as long as, you know, color powder is a medium consistency. So it doesn't, you see how it holds the shape? Although this is a very runny, it still holds the shape. That's what the monomer, one of the best things I love about this monomer. That it won't drip the powder over the place, but you can see when I touch it, the powder is immovable, right? It stabilizes the powder early, so that the powder can stay stabilized, but see it's still wet. A lot of wet powder would just drip and run. So my monomer doesn't do that. It's got medium setting. It's 100% EMA, soaks off really well. Yeah, I let it sit, and whenever I want to work with it, I work with it. I use my brush to brush it in. See, it stabilizes. I can just leave this here. And when I want to work with it, boom. This does it with every powder. A lot of times you guys think that it's the powder that is the consistency. No, most of the time, it's actually the monomer that actually is the big, big um, factor when it comes to making powder buttery. Um, that's why, you know, monomer is what changes the powder. Yes, sometimes the powder does have a uh, mix a certain way where it's buttery too, but most of the time it's, it's actually the monomer, guys. And you gotta find the right monomer. And this monomer might not, might not be for everybody because it sets a little faster, but as you can see, it, you do definitely get a lot more control. Um, it's not gonna run all over the place. I think one thing I like about my monomer, the way I have it made, is the stabilization. Like, see, it's stabilized. So that bead may look dry to you, but the moment I start working with it, Look what it does. It starts to become. This is why my monomer is always sold out. <laughs> Just so you know, anybody in here that, that bought my monomer knows. That's why people are asking for bigger sizes. I will have bigger sizes soon, guys. Just give me some time. But see? It's stabilized, but still be able to move. Gives you time, you know? Yep. Flamingo. Wage of W47, I think. See? When I want to move it, I'll move it. I know a lot of you guys are cringing like, is he going to move that bead? Is it going to stay? Is it going to dry like that? Nah. Now this monomer. This is the only monomer I use um, in my, uh, and you need the gallon. <laughs> Honestly, truly, if I can get the shipping to be cheaper for the gallon, I'll definitely provide it. But eventually I'll have the gallon. Um, but until now, 32 ounces coming soon. You can buy a bunch of 32s and make it a gallon for I care. You know, I'm always so worried about the shipping for you guys, but I realize that other companies charge a shit ton of, for shipping and they don't care. And I don't know, for some reason, I, I try to make sure the shipping's not too crazy for you to get your products. You know, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a nail tech too, I understand. I don't want to pay like a lot of shipping. I try to reduce it as much as possible for you guys. 
But damn, I missed this damn monomer. Out, out for a while too, guys. And look, ugh. it's so nice to have a nice monomer again. And we have one hand done. Um, you can go to the pin link below. You can go to now-shop.com. Or you go to my Instagram. Maybe you can grab my Instagram quick follow. There's a link in there for you. I got some new products coming in soon too. I'm testing out my own powder also. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come out with the most extensive cover collection you guys have ever seen. I just love ombre. I love light nudes. I love nudes. I love light pinks to cover pinks. I love all that. So I'm gonna focus on a big collection of just cover powders, different shades and all that stuff and make sure the powder is very, very nice and smooth. Um, and make sure they're compatible to my monomer, fortunately. Um, I've been holding off on that because I'm waiting for my monomer to be restocked. But I want to make sure it's compatible with my monomer also. <laughs> we just shouldn't have a problem because my monomer is pretty much compatible with everything. Um, I, don't, I don't think I have had anybody use my monomer on different brands that have had any issues. Um, I've always asked if people, are like, hey, what are you using? And they tell me, and I'm like, oh, how's it going? Yeah, it works perfect. Okay, cool. It's good feedback for me. But this is truly a universal monomer, truly. So you're not forced to use any specific type of powder. I do recommend chisel, wave gel, um, not polish. So I use a lot of those and it works really well. This is Flamingo from Wave Gel, W47 Flamingo. And this is a pretty color. You picked a pretty color, girl. Everybody's loving it. This is for pretty much anything, really. Very universal color. It's just a pretty pink. <laughs> she just picked a really pretty pink. That's all. I'm gonna put a little more powder here. I think I'm a little bit missing here. Always try to check the side profile, guys. Does your practice hands come with nail tips? Uh, my practice hand is just a, a very, it's just, it's just like a like a, a silicon practice hands. Um, if you want nail tip, you can put, you can always put nail tips in there yourselves. It doesn't come with nail tips. Um, I, I had just had those because a lot of my students were using them for class, but you know, they're just there. Um, they're, they're like a generic uh, silicon hand. You can stick tips up uh, up onto the, the, the wells. Um, if you're talking about the practice tips, you can actually use uh, natural tips and just stick it in there and then cut it to create a, a synthetic nail base. Then you can put your long straight nails on it later. But this is not a practice hand. This is a <laughs> it's a real a real person's hand. I thought I I would clarify that because a lot of people when they watch my live they think I'm using a practice hand. No, this is actually a real person. <laughs> They're just really quiet. <laughs> I think they think your hand is a practice hand. <laughs> yeah, there's sometimes when I have it zoomed in and people think I'm using a, 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 a silicone hand, but this is actually a real a real person's hand easily mistaken sometimes you know because they're they're, they're, they're they're not fidgeting and they're super quiet so people think they're fake <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Man, man that shit's buttery yeah oh you yeah i do have practice hands for sale just a, whatever hands those are just for you to stick um you know really up the practice tips in there and stuff like that um, I wouldn't recommend drilling too much on those ones it's a pity to drill on those they, they, they the silicone's not meant for you to drill on them but for you to stick like a like a full like one of those long stendhal tips in there to practice your application you can do that I usually use those for like um uh, when I after I'm done practicing like on a tip I stick it in there take pictures and stuff like that if you want to drill on something I prefer getting those cheap robotic ones the 20 30 dollar ones on Amazon you can draw the shit out of that and just remove the tips and remove the fingers and replace the fingers um, with a different nail base. But for the silicone one, I definitely gotta be careful using those. Sometimes you, you know, you can mess them up. Almost finishing about three more fingers here and then I'm gonna do a quick file, cubicle drill, and then top coat, really. Uh, you guys are taking three, four hours in the set. Um, focus on your application mainly. I take a lot of, well, most of my time is spent here doing this, making sure it's nice and smooth. 
from because it cuts down time for me to have to shave, drill, all that other excess stuff. I don't have to cap. This powder doesn't require me to cap with clear because it, it dries. Um, it's a core powder. It dries. It dries. Um, I but I do do the application the proper thickness that I need it. So um, I mean, for a lot of you guys that are using powders that require you to cap, yeah, you probably have to cap because it's probably pigment based. So it's very vibrant, and you just put a thin coat with the cap. But for you know me, I don't like the cap. So a lot of the products I use are you know just don't need the cap. So I'm, when I'm done, I'm done. And one, if, since I'm doing it so smooth, I don't have to really drill that much, so I'm not worried about thinning the nails out too much. Oh my god. A, a, a lot of times you guys say, oh, you make it look so easy. You know what? Sometimes when I do do this, I'm like, yeah, I do make it look so easy. Not gonna lie, sometimes it's just like, it's just like, you know, muscle memory. You do it so much, you never lose it. I took a break from doing a lot of nail lives because I took a break from doing nails in general. But I started opening up my books again and start picking up clients lately so I can show you guys. Go back to where it all began, <laughs> these nail lives. Will your brand be a core? You know, the cap? Yep, uh, for sure. My brand of acrylic powder definitely will be a core. And I'm, I'm not gonna do a cap powder because that's not how I work. I wanna be able to, you know, I just think it just takes it takes a little bit longer for the powder that you have to be capped. Um, you have to go through a whole new application process, and I really, really hate working with clear guys. Because clear is one of those powders that's going to be really runny. And you can run into issues with contamination, bubbling, all that stuff. Ugh. So when I don't have to work with clear, I try not to. How was the small smell? I buy the one from Young Nails. It smells so strong, like four to five days. I can still smell it. Mm, Lujuan, this this monomer does have an odor to it. I mean, it's gonna have an odor because that's what monomer smells like. If you're having an issue with monomer smell, I recommend like um, uh, you know, a ventilated area or how you dispose of your monomer during your process. Um, that's the best way I think I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna tell you that this is not gonna be an odor. It's gonna it's gonna have an odor. Um, that's just my monomer is very a generic monomer. Um, I did not have them take anything out to eliminate the odor. Uh, the smell of monomer actually is what makes it monomer. The chemical that they put in the monomer. That's what gives it the smell. So if you try to replace it or, or you know with something else or try to eliminate that, they have to lower it and it makes the monomer not work as well. Um, I would prefer a monomer to work at its best and just figure out how to eliminate the smell. I think air purifier works a lot, Lujuan, if you want to try that. Air purifiers, I've seen a lot of people use air purifiers and it actually works. Um, make sure you dispose your paper towels in like, you know, a closed container, something like that. Actually really helps, um, you know, and ventilate the area for sure. So it doesn't linger. But like I said, I've hosted my classes at senior homes before, <laughs> you know. So you know, the smell does go away within a day or two. A day. I can attest for that. I did a class in St. Louis. It was like a recreation center, like a senior recreational center, and they were fine with it. So. <laughs> it doesn't linger. That's for sure. Four to five days, that's a long time for it to linger. Yeah, it's definitely a hit or miss, Lou. Um, you can, it's just hard to find a monomer that doesn't smell. It's just, it's just one of those chemicals that... <laughs> I wish, if it was possible, that's a perfect world. I have a perfect working monomer that has no smell, okay. But it is what it is, it's a nail test, so you just gotta deal with it.
Make sure I don't over file, because the more you file, the more you remove, the worse the shape gets. A little bit of a tidbit tip there. Clean up underneath. Generally, 10 minutes, five to 10 minutes on this process. Um, as long as you, your application was good, there's not a lot of powder, over, like, you know, overhanging, you know, over uh, on the sidewalls. Um, it should take on the shape of the tips. I probably do a little bit of hand filing too. And then just do the cuticle and buff, wash, and top coat. Just remember, this process is a process of removing product. So the longer you file is actually not good. The longer you file, the more you remove. And you cannot add what you remove on. So, you know, you don't want to dig yourself a hole that you can't get out of. So just remember, just take it slow, strokes here and there. Take your time, look at the nail, make sure it's not getting too wonky. And don't stay on one side too long. Always the two, three stroke, one, two, three, one, two, three, and switch. And ideally, you should have a nice, shape nails there you go yeah, see I didn't really you can always finish up any filing later on after you done everything else don't spend too long during this process i know it's crazy for me to tell you that but i think a lot of you guys are your own worst enemy you sit there and just file 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 <laughs> and before you know it your coffin is turning into a ballerina or your taper is turning into a coffin your stiletto is going this way and that way and you're like oh, i can't revert this reverse this and unfortunately you can't so give yourself some room for error because filing is removing I think this is the biggest issues I think everybody had when I first started doing live. Everybody's like, shaping, I have, so much, I have such a hard time shaping. But I realized that now I don't get that question a lot more because the people that follow me since the beginning, they had to have gotten their shaping better. Because my tip with shaping is you gotta shape with your acrylic brush. You guys saw earlier when I was shaping, I was actually using my acrylic brush to shape as I was you know, molding the powder. best time to shape is when you're doing it with acrylic. Get the acrylic nice to a medium consistency where it's kind of moldable and that's when you shape the nail. And yes, these sets can be done in 30 minutes. I just showed you. We're at like less than 30 minutes right now and because I'm living, yes, it's gonna take me longer because I'm answering questions, reading comments. But if I was actually working, just working, working, hustling, I'd be finished already. without the surface most time your application is good the surface should be nice and smooth so it should be really quick i can use a drill bit for this too but drill bits take me a little bit longer because i have to it's a long nail base this allows me to use the whole emery board and i'll go through with the cuticle separately with the cuticle bit that's for later though Later on, you do a nice buffing and it'll remove. Um, generally, I like to do this with a 100 100 grit fi hand filer. Anything 80 80 works, but I think the more grit it is, it actually gets more scratch marks. And it's harder for you to actually remove that later with a buffer. So, I think 100 100 is good. Your application is great. And if you have bumpy application, you have to drill it first with a drill. Go, go for it. You know, situational.
Oops, sorry. Generally, you, you won't hit the cuticle, the client, because there's actually a little bit of apex there. So you will never ever hit the actual client's finger as long as you're doing it properly. Huh? She said she almost fell asleep, y'all. My mannequin hand almost fell asleep. I'm scared to do this. I don't want to make the nail flat. Um, you're not actually making the nail flat. You're just flattening out the base of the nail, see? From here to here. Because this is the bump here that will create you so you don't hit that area. So, there's actually structure there. I'll show you guys later. When I'm finished, I'll show you there's actually structure there. Most gentle male technician nail tech. <laughs> You hairs, Brittany. I'm very, I'm very, I'm a minimalist when it comes to doing nails, especially when it comes to application, the structure of the nails. I do the bare minimum what is needs to be done. I don't do too much because I don't want to overdo it. That's that's sometimes that's what happens when you do overdo. You do too much and it just you make it worse. Uh, this is 100 by 100, yeah. But this is 100 by 100, but from, from my brand, it's a, it's a coarse 100 by 100 zebra. Sometimes you guys get like uh, at the nail supply store, 100 by 100, like a, like a fine or something. It's actually different. I actually ran in a situation where I ran out of fat filers and I had to use like a, my, I had to go to a nail supply store and buy it and, it, and I bought the same grit, but it's completely different. Uh, now I can understand why you guys actually have to, uh, you guys ask because a lot of the grits are a little different because it's coarse or zebra. You know, there's so much. I never knew that until I guess you run out. Hey, Mars. Hey, Mars. How are you? You have any? You have any train that you? Do you have? Do you have any train? Try to try to use an e-file on client. Uh. I use e-files on clients. You have to probably have to retype that question there. Probably autocorrect killed that sentence. I'm gonna e-file later the cuticle area for sure. This is just me getting the base of nail, you know. Later I'll, I'll e-file the, the cuticle to seal it in. Always, it's a must for me. <laughs> Hey, Gianna, you owe me a few videos. <laughs> Lazy ass. How about, did she, oh, she asked, do you need to be trained to use an e-file? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure if you're gonna use an e-file and a drill bit, you definitely need some type of training or experience. I wouldn't take a brand new drill bit and being a, someone that's never used e-file before, jump onto a client and start drilling. Definitely can be a lot. Uh, Definitely can be a bad, bad experience there. So train, I wouldn't, I, you know, there's so much you can do when it comes to training using the e-file because even nail schools right now, they don't even show you, show nail text that, but definitely experience. You gotta try it yourself. Slower, use use uh, safety bits first. Don't just start off with a sharp bit or something like that. You know, e-file is definitely one of those dangerous, the da most dangerous part of doing nails probably for a lot of you guys. All right, I'm finished with the base of the nail here. I'm gonna get it nice and even. Now it's time for the e-file. So I can't go over how cute this little case is. I'll be using my 5-1 Sharp. These are out of stock. They'll be back in stock soon. This is gonna be nice when I travel for classes, put all my bits in here, I don't have to worry about falling out. Um, it's currently out of stock, only having the medium now. So now it's the part where everybody say, oh, the cuticle part, right? So now I don't have to worry about the cuticle area. Yeah, 
it's a sharp bit, so I'm able to get right in between the cuticle. And I like to work fast, sharp, in and out. I don't like to stay in the cuticle area too long. And this is the only area I need to smooth out because I already smoothed everything out here out. Seal so, you know, the cuticles will prevent lifting. And I'm just gonna blend in. You can use a sanding band and go back through this too. Or use very quick right here. But I'm gonna I'm gonna use a, I'm gonna use my buffer later for that. Remember, this is the area where I haven't, I my e file were not able to get to. That means that I can't, you know, get my e file in like that. So I have to use my drill bit to be able to get to these areas, smooth it out, seal the cuticles in. It's important to seal the cuticles in. That allows the lifting and all that stuff to be very minimal. You're gonna have lifting. No nails perfect. The nails are supposed to lift as it grows out. It's called wear and tear. But our job is to keep it as minimal as possible, so that it doesn't create air pockets underneath, water, pop off, something like that. Keto works definitely one of those things that will definitely do that for you. You want that drill bit? Hello to Lindsay Wing. Um, they'll be back in stock uh, probably end of this month and I'll have an extra fine. I think a lot of my Vietnamese followers uh, that support my products, they love extra fine. This is the fine, but um, this bit is actually made differently. It's a custom bit. I call it a smooth and remove bit. Um, it's, it's not as gritty as a lot of the 5 one bits you see out there. As you can see, it just moves and remove. So actually, I have a lot, bit more control over it. Oops, sorry. Is that hot? You falling asleep? Yeah. You can't be dozing off during this, okay? You can't have your hand be all droopy. Remember, this is sharp. <laughs> She's dozing off. Most clients are scared during this part. You're over here falling asleep. That's the trust, guys. Yeah, so this one I had it custom made. It's hard to explain. You actually have to use it and you'll see. A lot of people, a lot of my students like when you use it, they're like, they realize it. Oh, and now I see what you mean. It's not something I can explain. But you can just hear the sound, you already know. Like, it doesn't really kind of eat into the acrylic. It kind of just smooths it and it removes it. A lot of these metal bits um, are vertical cut and they, they really just get in there. So if you're not careful, you actually remove a lot of powder. And we're done with one hand. Yeah, most of my clients are pretty chill. That's how it should be. It should be a relaxing experience. I'm about to pull out your nail spots practice. Hey, go for it. Practice away. You can never get enough practicing in, you know? I sometimes practice also. New techniques, you know, or when I teach a class, I kind of prepare myself for the demoing process. I don't embarrass myself. <laughs> Actually, for me, at my level, we have to continue to practice because we have to keep up with the new trends. And you know, we actually get rusty faster than beginner nail techs who are learning. If you're learning, you know, that, that adrenaline from learning actually keeps you up to date and keeps you going. For me, like, you know, I have to consistently practice or else I'll lose what I have. I'll notice, I'll notice it right away, marginally. If I don't do nails for a month and I go back to doing nails, I'll notice a, a difference in my technique or my speed or how I do things. It, it shows up really quick. Cause I'm so used to doing the same thing over and over. I think that's a good thing, actually. So I'm, I'm, I actually can see myself getting rusty. The one thing I never get rusty is doing cuticle work. This is like one of my favorite things to do.
can't wait to try this bit in the extra fine though. When it comes in, I'm actually gonna bust it out. I like, I actually like using, and like using extra fine because it's really, really sharp. I'm pretty much doing a Russian manicure while I'm doing this. Just removing the cuticle too as I go. This process is not easy, guys. It takes time, a lot of training. Um, yes, you're gonna cut clients. I still cut clients to this day, so it's an accident. It's one of those things. Just really know how to properly clean it and stuff like that. Don't be too worried about that. You're gonna cut clients. If you want to do cuticle work like this, you're gonna cut a lot of clients before you get to this level. And when you get this level, guess what? You're still gonna cut clients once here and there. But once you're at a master level like this, you, it's no longer your fault when you cut clients. It's the client's fault. They fall asleep or, you know, they move. You always blame on them, right? So get to this level where you can start blaming everything on the client. You have to blame on yourself. And most of the time, the client wants to be in your chair, so they're gonna be like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's me. That's me. I'm sorry. So about 180 by 100 grit buffer should do it. It should be enough for you to buff off that 100 by 100 grit that we did over here. You can also go through with a sanding band, a fine sanding band if you want, and just run it through. I have a new, I have a new bit coming in with a bit kit. It's like a metal sanding band. It's gonna be what you're gonna be used to go through this later on. So we should be under 45 minutes at this point. Yeah. Finally, your Atlanta classes are dates. I have available. All right, that's not, yes, uh, Dixie Love. Yes, my Atlanta class is about halfway full. I announced it two days ago, so. I mean, if anything, if, if I can fill the class up faster, because I have minimum, I have a fixed seating, I might even post the class earlier for you guys. But I'll ask the group first if they're okay with it. Cause some class times I, I fill a class in like a week, and I give myself like a month, a month and a half, and then now the students just gotta wait for like a month, two months and a half. I don't know. If it's filled, I'm like, hey, you guys want it next week or two weeks from now? Give them time to plan. If everybody's okay, boom, get out of the way. Clean shaping, good good foundation, you know, this is what most clients want. Then you can slowly incorporate designs and stuff like that into it. A lot of you guys are just jumping into designs and all that bling so fast that you forget about what really matters is the nails itself, you know? 70% of the clients out there want just this simple set so that you can get out, get good money, get that experience. Not to say that design's not a bad thing, is it a bad thing? It's just, just give it some time, you know? structure is important this master right here mastering this process is actually the most important part of the nail journey because this process here never changes designs always change and designs don't always look the same but this always stays consistent so you want to stay consistent with this technique you can do this you're already a six-figure nail tech because you can knock these out in 40 minutes 30 minutes set guess what you're gonna be making more money than those three hour sets that you did that you're only doing for like $100, $150. Three hours, you can do six of these sets, right? And for a lot of you guys that are beginning off, you need to do more of these because the, you, the more you do, the better you get. You get more consistency. I'd rather do, if I was a beginner, I'd rather do six of these than two or three design sets and make the same amount of money because I get I get to do my application, my shaping and everything I get over and over again to build up my skill, hone my skill. I know that's hard to hear for a lot of you guys, but for a lot of you guys are just sitting there thinking, damn it. He's talking to me. Yeah, I am talking to you. If this if the shoe fits and this is this message is, is really targeting you, unfortunately it is. But I'm telling you, it's gonna benefit you as a nail tech growth wise. It saves you money. You don't just go out there and buy all these charms and bling and all this crazy stuff that you probably never even use. 
sit in your, your you know, sit in your drawer. Do this shorter even, medium, short nails. Get the process, get the application, the prep, the process over and over again. That's how you grow. foundation I think a little wonky but I, def I definitely the tips on right look how clean that is you know that's a happy client every time you don't gotta worry about oh, I wonder did she like the design under 30, 30 minutes under 40 guys these sets ideally you guys just watch me do it I did it and I was talking to you guys at the same time so you're sitting at home, you can definitely do this too. Right? I believe in you guys. See? You don't have to put it back in this time. Look at this top coat though, wow. Plan out of here, she didn't have to spend four hours with you. She happy, you're happy, and there you go. Have you guys enjoyed that? The structure of the nails, see, is there. It's not flat. Consistent structuring of the nails. I don't know why, but it's not focusing the camera for some reason. This right here, guys, this is what a nail tech is, okay? You need to get this down. I can do this in my sleep. I could be in a cave with, you know, Tony Stark, escape, and still produce a set like this. Because this is what I focused on in my career, in my early phase, before I did designs, before I did all the fancy stuff. This is what I focused on. This is what I mastered first, the foundation of the nails. There you go. And I'll see you guys later. Monomer's back in stock. A little cool little new uh, item here. You know, pretty drill bits. That was my top coat, and I'll see you guys later. Thank you for everybody for joining. Oh, because the light in the background won't focus. Ah, okay. Cool, cool. Maybe you'll focus now. Hey, let me see here. Another one. Yeah, you're right. It was the light. Hmm. See? Structure. Structure. I was just small now, bed, so I was really.